All right, so it looks like we are live. What's up, Action Tribe? AJ here, host and founder of My Seven Chakras, my7chakras.com, the show where we help you calm your mind, relax your nervous system, and experience the joy of being alive. In today's episode, we explore the amazing topic of magical mushrooms for healing and transformation. Now, I do want to mention that mushrooms and other plant medicine are just tools for self exploration, and I haven't experienced them yet. And so far, I'm loving the experiences that breathwork brings me. But one of my goals in 2021 is to sit down with a shaman with the right scene and, and you know, in the right setting, a ceremonial setting, uh, and experience it. Uh, because I want to see what is out there and what is in there, so to speak, uh, so that I can access that terrain and then go there through my breathwork. So if you like this topic and if you have heard about this topic, which is plant medicine or mushrooms, and you're eager to you know, listen to this episode, then make sure that you hit the subscribe button on your iPhone. If you're on Spotify, hit the follow button. If you're on YouTube, then hit the red subscribe button. All the links are in the show notes because subscribers help us reach new people. And so far, we've got 82% of you subscribed, but our goal is 90%. So if you're not subscribed yet, make sure that you smash that subscribe button right away. With that being said, let's bring on our special guest for today, Marla Martinson. Marla is a Los Angeles-based matchmaker, transformational life coach, energy healer, and a tarot reader. She's been using her intuitive skills to connect singles with their soulmates for two decades. And she also hosts a podcast, called The Mystical Matchmaker. And her latest memoir, which we're going to speak about today, The Magical Seeker, humorously chronicles a year in her world as she balances her life as Cupid to muggle multimillionaires and her deep dive into the mystical, magical, and the occult. So Marla, welcome to our show. Thanks, AJ. I'm so excited to be here with you. And what a cool platform. I love this live. And then we'll be on the podcast for iTunes. It's just like so cool. Yeah, absolutely. Right. It's like one step away from uh, doing an in-person show, which would be the ideal scenario. Uh, but right now, especially in COVID, it's made it even more difficult. But I promise you, maybe one day we'll do an in-person session along with some breath work and some sauna, jacuzzi and some lunch or dinner. Oh, my God, that? I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, so I'm really excited about um, this episode because we're going to dive deep into your experiences. But usually, I like to start with the beginning. So yeah. in your case, where were you born and brought up? Seattle area, Tacoma, Washington. So I was not far from you. I just got back last night. I was up there for two weeks. I uh, So I was born in the Pacific Northwest. So I grew up with, you know, loving my favorite uh uh, month was October. I love the autumn, the fall leaves, the rain, the the smell, the forests. So I grew up uh, spending a lot of time in the woods, building forts, climbing trees, catching pollywogs, uh, all of that. So very earth based uh, ch childhood. And then I took off uh, at eighteen for Hollywood. <laughs> so I moved away at eighteen. Interesting. So yeah. before eighteen, what was your childhood like in Seattle? Uh, yeah, I grew up in a, in a, uh, we moved from, we were in Tacoma, then the capital Olympia. And then when I was about four years old, we moved to a place called Federal Way. So my dad could be closer to Seattle to, for his work. And so it was this new development. This was in the 1960s. It was very leave it to beaver. Uh, you know, uh, the families, wonderful families, uh, everybody was together and they all had kids and you knew every single I could tell you every house who lived there and we'd all know each other and the kids would play together and you could go out and ride your bikes. You could go out in the woods as long as you're home by the time the streetlights came on, you know, you'd hear everybody's mother calling, you know, Marla, Brett, you know, six o'clock dinner time. It was a different time back then. You could, you know, now you can't leave your child in the front yard unsupervised. You know, a lot of times it's a different, mm. different world. So I, I really had a great childhood. You know, my parents, my mom was 
was a stay-at-home mom. There was fresh baked cookies in the cookie jar when we got home from school. My dad worked at, for the telephone company and in, in, in Seattle. And then, but then at 16, I had a big adventure and opened my horizons. My dad accepted a job in Tehran, Iran, and he worked for a communications company there. And I was so excited to be going to that big city. And at first we stopped off in Amsterdam and uh, then went to Iran. And and it was an amazing experience, uh, just absolutely amazing. The Shah was still there. So it was so actually the 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 um, the uh, the what do we call it? The official the official suit was the Chanel suit. You know, it wasn't the Chador. It was the Chanel suit. You know, people could people could dress however they wanted back then. It was you know go into the discos and and we had a blast. And then you know things unfortunately really took a sharp turn there. <laughs> I'd love to go back someday. Right. By the way, love the direction that we're going in, and I always wanted to ask you about uh, Iran because. I was looking at your Facebook profile and then it says Iran. So I was really curious and wanted to ask you more about that. But I see that we have about four magical attendees joining us right now. So whoever you are watching this session right now in the chat box, let us know what your name is and let's connect. Okay. So if you're watching this right now, add a comment below. Uh, but Marma, uh, what was life like? You sort of gave us a glimpse, but uh, and I have a few friends from Iran they don't like what is happening right now compared to yeah, before sure. obviously iran is a very rich culture and a culture about caring and sharing and good food right so oh, what yeah. was it like how long were you there we were there six months we were supposed to stay there like five years and then the revolution started but in those six months i mean i was in high school we had a beautiful apartment my dad went to work every day i went to high school uh, it was tehran american school so there were kids from uh, europe america there were some persian kids there too and kids from all over and um I, I became a cheerleader for the football team and you know it was it was really fun um our landlords lived below us and and everybody and oh and in the summer we moved there in june and so the summertime i got a job as a an english tutor to persian ladies so i'd go to their home and it was so fascinating for me a girl from federal way washington you know to where it's like leave it to beaversville to go into these iranian homes and everybody was different i had one gal called shore who was like 20 maybe 8 19 and she uh was very religious so she wouldn't even answer the door without her chador on and she mm -hmm. she was like oh you're listening to the pop music station no 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 that's bad and i was like what you know and then and then i went to this other woman's house her name was manzar and she was 19 and she was married but she drove her mercedes she got her hair colored she was real cool but one time when my uh taxi didn't come to pick me up after I said, well, why can't you just drive me? You've got a car. And she says, no, I can't. I must be in the home when my husband comes home from work. I said, can't you just leave him a note? Like, that's what my mom would do, like leave a note. No, I must be in, in the home when Hamid comes home. So it was very interesting. And I ha and then I had a very good friend named Seema. You'd go to anybody's house you go to, big platter of fruit, uh, tea. Do you want to take a nap? They'd even say, do you want to? I mean, so hospitable. Mm. I, I absolutely loved it. And you're right. The music, the culture, the art, uh, the uh, everything just magnificent. And uh, I, I really it hurts my heart to know that what you know, it's not like a freer society as it was that people could come and go and visit this magnificent place. Right. Yeah, I hope things change. And one of my goals is to be able to visit, you know, all these different beautiful places around the world right. and uh, maybe do breath work and healing and that sort of thing. Have those shared moments along with people. But you sort of mentioned that at one point you wanted to be an actress and, yeah, and work in Hollywood. I I did. I, I went down there at 18 and uh, at 20, I got an agent and I started doing TV commercials right away. Chevrolet, McDonald's, uh, you know, all these things. And then I did some smaller parts on different shows. I did mod I was modeling, uh, but I ended up and I, of course, to pay my bills, I worked in restaurants. So I did that uh, for the 80s and then the most of the 90s i moved to chicago i was married to a french chef at the time and we moved to chicago and i was able to they had quite a bit of acting there and i did a lot of commercials there also worked in the restaurant industry so that was for 20 years um my life kind of got split in two at 39 when my father uh who i was daddy's girl it was the most uh 
devastating thing when he had terminal cancer i found out and then he died shortly after and i'd moved back from chicago to the california area he had been living down here to be with him and he died very fast and it was just i was absolutely devastated i was back in in la alone and no job i gave up everything and uh met my now husband shortly after and uh so i've been with adolfo two decades now i can't believe it yeah, yeah, time just flies when you're having fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and speaking about fun, magic mushrooms. What are magic mushrooms? Well, the, these are mushrooms. Uh, they're psilocybin. They contain psilocybin, so uh, which is a psychoactive ingredient, and um, there's many varieties of them. I, you know, I don't know the real ins and outs. I just know my experience. I have. Mm -hmm had 11 um, uh, psilocybin mushroom journeys. Um, and some people say, wow, that's so many. And uh, some people have done many, you know, hundreds. Um, I started a deep dive into my spiritual. I always was metaphysical and, and into spirituality from, from my 20s. But in 2013, late 2013, I started taking a deep dive, which I wrote about in The Buddha Made Me Do It, my, my spiritual memoir with my friend Julie. And we started going to do, you know, learn about candle magic and pendulums and spirit guides and everything under the book. I got Re attuned to Reiki, all this stuff. So since late 2013, I've been on this quest to really uh, deepen my spiritual connection, my um, channeling abilities. And, and I, you know, I read that I can't even believe I could say I'm a tarot reader. I mean, that was something I thought, what a cool thing to do, like on the side. I wish I could do that a few. And now I'm doing it and people get readings from me. And I'm like, wow, you know, it's very interesting. But at one point, I decided that I wanted to do some plant medicine and I'm not, you know, I won't go into who, what, where, because, you know, of different reasons, but uh, it's not, you know, done everywhere, but there are places, there are these retreats like in Costa Rica and Peru and different places that you can go and, and work with a shaman. And so I decided to do that. And uh, I worked one-on-one -on -one, uh, with someone and, and, um, it's very interesting because here I'm a, my friend, Julie was like, Marla, she, her mind was blown. She's like, you, you're such a goody two shoes. Like I hardly drink alcohol. I've never done drugs. I'm into, you know, very plant-based. I'm very like, you're doing drugs. You know, I'm, I can't mm. believe you're doing this. And even my husband, he's like, you're doing, this is not right. You could, you're my, you could go nuts. Like mm. people have like, they get real scared. And as I'm like, this is really, um, uh, I guess because I'm very connected with nature and going back to where I was, I was talking to you about growing up in the forest and stuff. And yeah. I know that this plant medicine is it's, it's a teacher. It has its own wisdom, like its own life. It's here for us. And, um, and magic so, mushrooms. yeah, a little <laughs> mushroom tea. No. <laughs> Woo! Uh, and so my experience, okay, so I'll just go into my experience. So I did go for the, not my choice, but the person facilitating to, you know, I did the, like the hero's journey. So I guess there's the different, there's the different, uh, is it grams? I've got some uh, info here. So the micro, so there's, so what they have is micro dose, which is uh 0.5 to 20, 0.25 grams under a gram, the mic, mini, then there's the mini dose, 0.25 mm -hmm. still under a, a gram. And then the museum, they call it a museum dose, which is 0.5 to 1.5 grams. And they call it that because you could still on that dose participate in public activities such as viewing paintings in a museum without attracting attention, right? I didn't do those. I Then there's the moderate dose, 2.3, no, 2.3 grams to 3.5 grams. Now that's where it's a full psychedelic experience. And then there's like the hero's journey, which is like five plus. And I started right away with the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And, and so my, uh, reasons were, first of all, I, I thought, okay, I want to open my third eye more. I want to be more psychic. I want to be channeling. I'm really love the channeling stuff. And I thought, ah, oh, this is going to be perfect for me. So you start doing it and Interestingly enough, the plant, the, the mushroom decides what you need. You don't tell it, you don't say, I'm going in here and I'm going to do, you know, open my third eye and I'm going to do this. And I'm, it, 
it first has to, I didn't realize, but I had to recalibrate my whole nervous system. I had to clear out a bunch of past lives. I had to clear out grief, pain, anger that I had stored up from, um, I had a lot of uh, alcoholism in my family growing up. Many, many family members, even my brother at 39 died of alcoholism, my uncle, my everybody. So uh, I'm like practically really the only one who's like this health nut. And so I had a lot of uh, codependency issues, um, always problems in my marriages and with men and um, a lot of anger and, and uh, just, you know, divorces and anyway, and that had to be cleared out. So before you can be, bring up your intuition, before you can be the real spiritual teacher that you're meant to be and step into it, you've got to clear this stuff out. I didn't know that. I mean, mm -hmm. I knew that I had to know stuff, but I didn't know I had to clear all this. And I had a lot. And sometimes I would just be crying for an hour. There'd be crying and sobbing. There'd be uh, things that for me, I never, saw, first I'd see colors like these beautiful, like an octopus tentacles of colors. And then that was it. After that, I've never had visions, but it's a knowing. I'd know, I'd say, oh, a spirit guide's there. Oh, I, or hearing. Oh, I hear the spirit guides talking. I hear the music I or smell. I smelled like a birthday cake being baked almost, you know, all these, these things. And then you just know. And what, like one of the um, experiences I could, feel, I could see every person on my block in my neighborhood uh, realize their pain. So, mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's so, it's so uh, healing because maybe you think, okay, your neighbor's a jerk or you don't like somebody, and, but you don't know what they're going through or what they've gone through or their pain or what they're just trying to uh, deal with in this human existence. And you see that, and then you feel very Oh my God, you feel there's a lot of like ashamed stuff. I guess it's maybe it's like a life review after you cross over to the mm -hmm. other side, you know? And so I'm going to stop you right there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. It's great that you shared so much. And obviously, there's so much that's coming through. There's which so after 11 of them, there's so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the first time I heard, well, 11 doses, that's a lot. Uh, firstly, one dose is a lot for a lot of people, right? Especially since you 11 mentioned that. Yeah, 11 sessions spread 11 out sessions. Over, over, yeah. yeah. And, your and first I'll session tell you why, a, and I'll tell you why after. Yeah, go ahead. Sure, sure, sure. So your first session or your first dose, uh, your first experience was a heroic dose, like you mentioned. Yeah. And you've sort of uh, mentioned that your goal initially, at least, was to open your third eye, was to awaken or to strengthen your psychic abilities yeah. and you felt that the mushroom will help you do that because uh, before accessing your intuition you had to do a lot of clearing and cleansing mm -hmm. of things that were holding you back energetically um, and so sort of before diving deeper into your experiences which i'm definitely going to go into you written in your book that mushrooms are called the biological internet mm -hmm. correct Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Why, yeah, because they go under, there's a, uh, the mushrooms, not, we're not just talking psilocybin, but mushrooms in general, in general. they, they go on, it's like a internet and they're under, we're walking on it, you know, it's, it's connected, interconnected and it connects and then they pop up. It's just incredible. All of uh, this, uh, what they do. I mean, they, they're so magical. And um, yeah. And the reason AJ, I did, uh, so many, and I'm planning to do more because one is not going to, uh, just like, let's say you go to the chiropractor once in your life. I mean, mm -hmm. if you have a bat, you had an accident or something, you know, you don't go once. I mean, you don't brush your teeth once, whatever. I'm it's one time is, well, you'll have an experience, but it's, you're not going to get the benefits. If you're looking for self healing, uh, self improvement, um, spiritual, uh, deep dive, all of that, it's it going to take more than one. It's just, mm. so I wouldn't do just, you know, one, it, because there's so much more to go. So you, you do some clearing, you see some stuff and it's not like, Oh, this is so beautiful. Look at the color. No, it's crying. It's like, Oh my God, it's hard. It's not mm -hmm. for the faint of heart. It's not to do on a lark. You have to say, okay, am I opened? Because you can be really feeling like everything and just it's, it's, hard and then when i got home i'd have to go to bed and sometimes stay in bed the whole next day and and just process all of this and and have a headache and um so but after 
so after like up, uh, the third three were like that, then the fourth, fifth, sixth, okay, then that stuff's calibrated. The nervous system, things are cleared out. Then, oh, fairies, the fairies here. Fairies are here. Fairy, so then I'm channeling fairies. I'm channeling the Pleiadians. The Pleiadians are coming through and they're doing light language. They're doing like, so I'm doing all these things with my hands just <clears throat> without... I didn't, they just start doing it. They just start, I'm laying there and they just start doing it and they just start talking through me. We are off planet guides and coming through. And then that's when it's like, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. This is all worth it. And, but then right. there might be some more crying and, oh my God, and worried about, you know, this and I miss my dad and, you know, things come up. But then Jaguar spirits here and then we're working on this and then you're howling at the moon. <laughs> Right. It's so, really, yeah. so going back to your first trip, uh, maybe if you could describe your first trip for us, you know, you don't have to be specific, yeah. but was it indoors? Was it outdoors? If you could just describe the scene yeah. and setting for us, so because this is really fascinating. Whatever you shared so far is amazing. And it's okay. obvious that there's a lot of shift happening. There's a lot of emotional shift, a lot of imagery happening. But I just want to paint a picture for our listeners right now who are, many of them are completely due to magic mushrooms. Right. Right, and they'd be like, "Is it a butter mushroom?" Wait, <laughs> so it's obviously a butter mushroom. <laughs> a, a, a butter mushroom, yeah. But so, 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 paint a picture for us. You know, the first, your first experience, right. and where so, were you? What were you doing? So yeah, so you don't. So you start um, in the morning. I did. Okay. I start in the morning, like maybe ten a.m. You don't eat before I ate, okay. ate uh, the, the night before, and then you don't eat, um, and then you'll lay. So since mine was a hero's journey, it wasn't just okay. a small amount. It, you lay down. Well, you drink it. You 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 bless it, and you sit there, and you're like, okay, that you know, make an intention, thank the guides, and everything that's going to be happening drink it, put it in, you can put it in some hot chocolate or, okay. you know, I like to put it in some hot chocolate, um, drink it down. And then, oh, it takes maybe 20 minutes uh, to start the effect. You lay down some music, have some music going, some spiritual music. And then the person's there with you, like um, a, a shaman or a sitter or whatever, um, uh, medicine person, you know, the whoever you go to. Um, yeah. And then they're there and leading you through now, for me, it was uh, that was a t it was tough. I'm trying to think back, and um, it's a lot of there was some crying. There was some enter the person would do energy work on me, clearing stuff, and then also your legs might start just moving like like this, like crazy, because you're recalibrating. You might start shaking, but that's your uh, nervous system recalibrating. Um, I went, oh, at one point we went up to, when I had to go to the bathroom, went up and looked in the mirror. I looked at myself and I looked all like craggly, like dark, like ugly kind of. And, mm. and that was like the shadow or something or how I'd seen myself or maybe what I needed to clear out or something, you know, right. my, and it was so interesting. I was like, oh my God. And then and then, so then I, it doesn't happen anymore, but it did. There was stuff. It was almost like, you know how we even beat up on ourselves? Like, I'm not good enough. I'm not, for all of our past, how we were maybe bullied and all of this stuff. There's so much there. There's mm -hmm. so much embedded in us. And uh, and then there's past life stuff. And, and so it was really going through all that. There was, you don't get up. Oh, I couldn't. And when people talk about, oh, yeah, take some mushrooms and walk around. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't walk around. I mean, I, I couldn't have. I, I had even maybe crawl and then be, help, be helped to the bathroom. It was, you're just that way. And then it takes about six hours until you could, you know, get up and, and do, you know, go go somewhere but even then it's like just go to bed um mm. but so it's it was a tough you know it was like wow but i felt proud of myself it was like wow it's something that um to to be willing to do it because it's the unknown really mm. and and i've never you know i know my husband was very worried about oh you could die you could something could happen i've there's never been any instances that i've ever heard of or talked to anybody that that would would happen you, it's not addictive actually once you start keep doing these you take less you don't it's not like a heroin or something where you have to take more and more and more for effects mm -hmm. this you actually take start taking less and it so so and it you never think oh oh i need some mushroom i mean it's not addictive at all it's actually like Oof, i better wait another six months before i do that again <laughs> Right, right. Interesting. Yeah. 
So obviously it takes a lot of courage, right? Which is why it's called the heroic journey because you need to be a, or recognize the hero within you in order to get started with that. And that's what you got started with, right? Um, but as you look back or maybe based on your research or study, what is it about mushrooms that has such an effect on human beings? Oh gosh, you know, I have, it's so funny because I haven't, well, I have listened to like Terrence McKenna and different people and, but I, I'm not like a real expert. I'm just an expert on my experiences with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, of course. But, but I know that it, it's, they're using it in different clinical uh, um, uh, situations uh, for alcohol or drug abuse or depression um, uh, to helping people trans, um, when they're dying in that, I, I mean, I think it would be amazing to give to someone if they're making their transition, you know, um, yeah. I can see where it's, it's really, once it gets more legal everywhere again, and um, it was years and years ago, they, but some things happened back in the sixties and they, so they banned it and stuff, but I think it's so beneficial. I think it's um, in a clinical setting and then for people, but also in that, like you were talking about, you, you're doing some groups where you're doing this sacred, I, I mean, it, it, making it sacred, it's so beautiful, like a whole ceremony. And you really feel like you're back to your tribal roots. And mm. I, growing up in Seattle, there's a lot of Native American um, culture there, the totem poles, and we go and see the, go to salmon bakes and see the Indians. And I, I had that, and then I have past lives as uh, Native American. And I just feel like very, um, connected to that and it it all it's the the plant medicine feels very shamanic very native american to me when i do it it feels very like going back to that tribal and then the guides come in your spirit guides come in and i i just love that yeah if i do it and i'm gonna do it probably later this year i do want to do it uh you know in the right setting in the right scene so that i have somebody just like your experience um hold space for me um protect me energetically and sometimes especially for me i find it more fun <laughs> when you're doing it in a, in a group yeah. and yeah i'm just curious because right. um i have read i've come through some of the research that you might have come across as well where they are comparing the effects of breath work with mm -hmm. psychedelics like psilocybin yes. yeah. and they're noticing that breath work is equally as effective and the and the benefit of breath work is that you can come out immediately and you can you know go to work or you mm -hmm. can you know, go outdoors and not be you know uh worried about the after effects of it whereas maybe if you're doing like magical mushrooms or something else it can take a couple of hours right for you to get back to it you need it, some rest you need some recovery yeah, for me it, even the next day I, I, and then na yeah. then then there was one i don't know if it was like my eighth or ninth yeah. life i was like wow you know i was i was driving and i was looking at rainbows and i felt great and i was fine and then the, another one it's like oh, i gotta go right to bed i'm i just wiped out i can't do anything so it just depends it's it really it it goes where it does what it needs to do and you just surrender there's just surrender and i know you're going to do really well with it aj you're going to go all you know right into it and and get the most out of it because it is something when you do this it's like go into it with the intention of i i i'm there for uh, the growth. I don't, mm -hmm. I wasn't doing it because I thought it was cool or I want to curious. I did it because for the deep, deep growth and healing. And um, it's mm. helped me a lot. Yeah. So when you do, especially maybe your first session or second session, when you finish the session, how easy it is for you to remember exactly what you saw or what you felt or the patterns yeah. and colors I that remember you remember everything. You remember I do, everything. I do journal when I get home. I write it down you just in care. case I don't remember and there might, you know, things that maybe was happening and what I yeah, I, I have a journal. But thinking back, like I can just look, oh that oh yeah. And and you remember. Mm hmm Yeah. So I mean I, I you did provide us a little glimpse of it, but you know, going back to maybe your first or second or third, it could be anything, something that's vivid. What do you exactly see? when you're in the middle of it you know what do you see so what's <laughs> interesting it does it does open the third eye so you are actually at a point maybe really like a couple hours into it you're in an in the other dimension 
And that's when, why you can hear, I could hear the spirit guides came in one time playing this loud music, loud music. And it was joyful. And I got up and I was dancing and uh, there was no music, no, uh, it wasn't on the stereo or any, you know, it was, it was, I heard them because I'm in the other dimension and I could hear, I could hear a, one time I was laying there and I heard whispers. I knew, yeah. Whispers, and I knew there was an old like crone. And then the person that the shaman I worked with said, that's the, the he, that's the medicine woman. She came. Mm-hmm. And, and so other guides will come from other dimensions and I'll start going <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> oh, Jaguar spirits here. Oh, and yeah, you do you it? just, yeah, you start. And then sometimes, okay. So then there was ones where now I'll do these, I'll, I'll do like these operatic, ah, you know, ah, I'll just really loud, ah, and, and what it is, is it's opening the throat chakra. It's balancing the chakras and the throat chakra. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting, AJ, is I don't decide to do any of this. I don't even, it just does. I'm just like doing it. And I'm like, it just does it. (laughs) It's so interesting. (laughs) My hands are doing light language. I'm, you know, doing, and, and I'll, sometimes it's like an hour or two, I'm doing the you know, loud noise and my throat never hurts. I never have, you know, if you were in a large loud party and you're talking all night, you're like, oh, the next day, it hurts, yeah. nothing, nothing at all. Uh, so it's, it's healing it. It's opening everything. I would imagine that, especially if a person was initially more withdrawn, mm-hmm. had a little bit of social anxiety an experience like this would allow them to go beyond the threshold and really be comfortable in their discomfort in using their voice or maybe shaking or dancing and listening to music, trusting their inner voice as well. And well, you know what it does also, it, it, it shows us that we are magical beings, that we are this beautiful exactly. spark of the divine. We are a spirit in a body and we, there is another dimension that we've been there and talked to the spirit guides and fairies and, and uh, other uh, beings. And we think it's interesting because we think, oh, fairies or gnomes or unicorns and stuff that's just made yeah. up. It's not made up. They exist in another dimension, in another energetic dimension, all these beings and these people that have done the fairy tales or written about them or or whatever they were there in those dimensions somehow maybe they took you know some magic mushrooms maybe they were in meditation or breath work or right. uh, out of body astral travel um but they do it is real um mm-hmm. it's, so we're not like being silly when we say that and it's it's this and then we connect and then that what i so loved was when the star beings came through the pleiades and the other this you know the guides from the other star systems came came through start talking those guides and now i do a I do a magical message circle every saturday night at 6 p.m pacific um maximum eight people so we meet on zoom and then uh i i go around and give messages to people and a lot of times the star the galactic federation comes through and gives messages so i have a question about that a couple of questions actually and so firstly listeners if you're watching this right now if you have any questions please add them in the comments because i'd love to feature your questions as well but marla my question is and i love that you're sharing this but what was your thought or your belief about pleadians or these intergalactic beings before you experienced the mushrooms oh i got a good story okay and then how <laughs> like how do you know it's the you know intergalactic beings how do you know what okay. is light language and how like i, I just want to get a better grip sure. on this sure okay. so so uh years ago well maybe 2016 i went to this channeler this woman it's in my book i, I talk about all this if the buddha you guys if you're interested in all this in the buddha made me do it a field guide to enlightenment mm-hmm. that memoir it's got all those kind of things where i started getting into this. So I, in that book, I talk about, I went to a, a channeler, she channeled light be- a collective of 12 light beings. And I had a private session with her and they, and I recorded and everything. And they said, I have, a, I am connected with the Pleiades. I had, that's one of the star systems that I, I energetically am connected to and was living. Okay. And then I, I started working on the, um, some people call it the Ouija board, but it's a uh, just a board, you know, with letters on it, like a communication board. So I was doing that uh, years ago too. And and I remember one time I was getting messages on it and writing down notes. And and I looking back, there was a, a, a guide that came through called Calderon. And he said he was from the Pleiades. And so after my experience 
in the uh, mushroom journey uh, of, of them coming through, I went back and looked in my book, the Buddha made me do it, and in my notebook of the notes about, and they said it was the Pleiades. It, it, but, you know, two different times, it was like, oh my God, they say same thing. And then I also, conf uh, um, there's a spirit guide that comes through that also said, yes, that's so, okay. So I totally believe it because it's like three different yeah. people and times. And then the light language. So I'm just laying there and all of a sudden my hands start moving and it's like this. It's very, um, a lot of like this and, and they would go like this. And then right. I would do that so long at the end of the day. I mean, I'm completely bruised. I mean, black and blue and bruised and painful because I would mm -hmm. do it for like four or five hours there doing this and they're coming through. And so, um, and I didn't even try to do it. And so that is the guides how they were coming through. So see, even now I can talking about it, they're coming through and there's some light. And then they started, I just started talking. They just, the stream of consciousness just started talking. We are off planet guides. We are, uh, we are, what did it say? We are, uh, uh, restructuring the DNA or recalibrating or something about the DNA. So they were coming in doing this stuff, working with right. me. It was very interesting. And then, so sometimes too, I'll be given readings and then it will, they'll just like be coming, coming through like that. It's interesting. Have you seen the TV show, The OA? The what? The OA. D-O-A. No. no. The OA. The two letters, OA. No. And the OA. Yeah, so The OA is actually a pretty popular TV show, sci-fi TV show on Netflix, and they do exactly like this. They do oh, exactly they do that? Okay. Yeah. I got to watch that. There's you so many things It's an Netflix. amazing TV show, and unfortunately, they didn't go past season two, but I was really hooked on to that, apart from, so I love The OA. Um Sense8 and the 100, so like oh. these sci-fi shows, but the, okay. the they were doing exactly. So I was like, have you seen that or no? Because no, I have never heard of it. I've never to... seen any. I mean, <laughs> I know I've seen like on Facebook. There's some a couple women who have these pages and they're doing this light language stuff. Right. But, but yeah. you know, but I do my own. I mean, what mine is always like this. It's a lot of hitting. Then this is interesting, AJ. So so every time. If this is practically the whole for hours i'll be i'll be i'll be going like this on my whole body hitting my legs hitting my hitting my my hitting myself mm -hmm. and and going like this so yeah. it must be also releasing energy almost like tapping you know the yeah. eft tapping and it's yeah. just do and it does it i mean i don't decide to i'm just doing it the whole <laughs> that's also a qigong technique you know like it, and i record it. my yeah. sessions and i hear all this slapping uh, you know on the recording while i'm in and because i want to hear what i'm channeling i want to hear what's mm. going on so i'll record it which is pretty cool well, we got messages from the audience yeah well right. michelle says love sensate love oa so we've got a group you've got a tribe oh. of live viewers watching cool. this so let us know what your name is and are you enjoying the session so far well you're watching so far that means you're enjoying this conversation michelle. and uh, uh so marla what type of mushroom do you well it's have it's, you done many or done it's one psilocybin or? i don't you know i don't buy it it's when you do it with somebody they have it and they, they, they just okay yeah yeah because i've heard different types try to know, get it you know and but i would be very careful i too if i did do okay in my book the magic seeker the magic seeker so mm -hmm. it just came out in december and in the towards the back of the book which you read i describe i go i went what i did was i went into i um into the woods and I rented an Airbnb and I mm -hmm. decided to do a, a uh, journey by myself. And that was the, first was the last one, right? The last that, one. That's, that you... uh, no, the next to the last, I did another okay. one since the okay. last, the, um, that, but that was like my 10th. And I felt, I felt, okay, I can do, I've done it enough times. I feel like I can do it myself. And I mm -hmm. did like 3.5 uh, grams. It was tough. I won't do another one alone. It was <laughs> hell. It was the shadow. I was crying. It was, oh, it was not good. I mean, it was just hard. It was a lot of seeing mm. things that I, and so many times, you know, I, I was very unaware, you know, in my t saying things to people that would hurt their feelings. I would just, you know, I kind of was one of those people that would blurt things out or, relationships, you know, how many times in when we've had hard relationships where you tell the person, I hate you, or, you know, just say terrible things. And that all kind of comes back. 
And we've all had arguments with our parents or with somebody that you went off on or us. And, and we've had, I've had a lot of those experiences at my age now over the over and it comes back. It's like, Oh comes crap. Back. Yeah. It's kind of like mm -hmm. that life review. I was, and, and you don't see it, but you just know it. It's, and it's this knowing for me, maybe people, other people might see things. I just know and hear and uh, experience. But it was hard to see that. And then you want to change, though, after you want to you want to be better. You want to uh, you're more compassionate. Um, you're more you. You're more just it's just like you're more a, co a cosmic a citizen. So it seems like the mushroom experience or maybe especially if you're taking a higher dose, it's acting like a mirror and it's revealing to you aspects of yourself that were previously in the dark or you did not know about it. And now it's all coming through you, like the you watching yourself on the mirror. And so that provides an, is that is that conducive to your healing? You want to work yes, on yourself? Because, you want to yeah, for it? me, for me, it does, because it's releasing those things. And it's also making me f uh, realize uh, how to treat people differently and myself differently and forgiveness and love and how we're all connected. It really, you can say, you know, all these spiritual jargon, we're all connected. We're all one, Yeah. but you really feel it. You can really see that, but then there may be some really cool uh, other things going on. It's the hard part. And then maybe the next hour it's like the fairies are coming. So it's a mixture and everybody, I can only speak for my own experience. I, I don't know other you know, if other people are going through the same thing, but this is just what I've experienced. Well, that's the thing about consciousness, right? Consciousness is so subjective that it can never be objective. And the moment you try to study consciousness from an objective standpoint, you lose it all. And that's why even the most advanced scientists are stumbled. They're stumbling. They don't understand what consciousness is because so far in science, we've got a very reductionist perspective on science, like breaking it down, uh, molecules and atoms. But what beyond? At what point do these brain signals become consciousness where a person is seeing colors and experiencing senses? Yeah. We can't just do it. So it sort of makes sense that we all have a different experience, a different experience yeah. from the same uh, mushroom, this magical mushroom. And like you've mentioned, there's a sacredness, there's a mysticalness to it, where the mushroom, it seems, decides what that experience is for you based on your life experience so far. So it's yeah, really, it's very really personalized. It's very personal. And what I've heard is once you do it, it's always in you. It's always that it's always consciousness that's always with you. That's always in you, which I think is so cool. I love it. I love the psilocybin mushroom. It's like such a sacred friend, healer, teacher. So talk to us about I've got an important question, but before that, Justina says, hey, I love the show, Oe, and she says, first time watching your face. Never had that comment before. Well, I'll take that. Yes. Okay, but- Oh, FaceTime, uh, maybe, your Facebook, Facebook Live. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> thanks, Justina. Thanks for checking us out. And yeah, please come on for more live streams like this. That's what we do all the time before I launch it into my podcast. But Marla, during one of your mushroom experiences, you discovered or you learned or it was emphasized that your husband is, in fact, your twin flame, twin flame right? Oh. <laughs> Talk to us about that. What is the twin flame? How did you come to know that he indeed is your twin flame? So the twin flame, well, the twin flame, so, and I'm a matchmaker for 20 years, you guys. So, you know, I've, I have that question asked to me in, in you know, radio and podcasts and TV all the time. What's a soulmate? What's a twin flame? Do you have mm -hmm. one? And and the soulmate is like, you know, you and I, AJ, are probably soulmates. It's friends, pets, uh, lovers, everybody, anybody that you uh, have a kinship with, maybe you run into and uh, we we travel in soul groups. So you have soulmates, this, these yeah. soulmate groups and, and we learn from and a soulmate may stay in your life, you know, a season or for a reason or for a lifetime. Then the twin right. flame, that's uh, you have that romantic relationship and you might not want a twin flame relationship. It's really going to show it's really going to uh, show you all of those places that you need to heal. It's like like uh, Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love. That was a twin flame relationship. A lot of them may be power couples or couples that you have a lot of uh, you're going to really be a mirror for each other and, and make and they'll, they will carve you out of stone. You know, they'll really uh, get you to. Uh, 
it's not going to always be easy, but, but it shows you. So my husband, we've had a, a t- turbulent relationship, uh, mm-hmm. but he's shown me where I needed to heal, where I had anger. I had reaction, reactive. Uh, I had a lot of stuff from my childhood, from background that, which I had a good childhood, but there were things that, you know, happened that we all, I think everybody has goes through something. That's why we're here on earth. We, we made an agreement before we came in the body, what we're going to experience. And, um, uh, so he, he, I think he really pushed me into these deep spiritual, uh, discoveries and healing so yeah he didn't try he didn't do it say it i yeah me he pushed me without realizing it (laughs) yeah and also like with relationships a lot of it is beyond communication right so it's not a lot about what you say but it's about you know like your overall um actions or your energy overall like i'm like we spoke before this i'm doing a training on um you know experiencing men's circles men's mm-hmm. sacred circles and really revisiting what it means to be a man and i'm learning mm-hmm. that one of the roles of being a man is to be present and to be grounded and to be a container for the women or the woman in his life so that she can express her divinity and femininity and so it's interesting you learn about human beings but you also learn about the universe the yin and yang the black and white and how these two polars merge to form life. So it's interesting how your husband supported you and you realize that he indeed is your twin flame because well, he didn't it's not an easy journey, me. right? He didn't support me, but I, I did I did it anyway. You know what I you mean? Did it he, anyway, he, yeah. Oh, he was fighting me on all this fronts. Okay. But, but uh, at this point, now he still does not want me doing the journeys, but I still do them. But he loves, I mean, he what didn't he thought tarot was evil. He thought, you know, go, growing up Catholic. Now he loves me to give him tarot readings. So mm. he's opened up. He has crystals now. He I gave him a bunch. He's 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 uh, doing his pendulum work, yeah. uh, crystal charging. He's I mean, this is unbelievable from somebody who was completely you know, just practical. None of this is real. That's not, Mm -hmm. you know, what that's nuts. And now he's like, Oh, what crystal is this? Look, what does this do? And he's like, has a bunch in his office now. And it's so cool. So he's opening up and it's fun to see that, but I'm still, you know, a lot farther uh, out in the woo from him, but, but he, he likes Reiki energy work. He does like that. He likes me to give that to him. And one thing, AJ also somehow, I guess, even though I've written like six books and I've been on TV and I was acting and I've done things and had a successful business, there was this kind of imposter syndrome that I'd have. And and maybe from being bullied as a kid and I had this bright red hair and freckles and people would call me names and they'd pull my hair out and, you know, try to beat me up and and stuff when I was. And, and so I, I had this feeling like, uh, who am I to, uh, I'd look at other people who, who were, energy healers or giving a talk or talking about crystals and literally like not even that long ago a few years ago I was like oh they're doing that oh my god how do they know so much how can they do that right and I was like oh my god and now this the, all these journeys and the clearing out and all this stuff has helped me to realize I am here for a reason to help to bring people together to heal to use my skills and my uh, abilities what i've learned and i i'm just as knowledgeable as uh, most of these people that i was like looking up to and i and i can step into that now i've stepped into being a transformational coach with it took me years to think i was good enough to be a coach and so i would just dip my toe in and now mm-hmm. i'm all in so it's really helped me see that i am this cosmic being and i am here for a reason and i have power within me and it's helped me step into who i'm meant to be instead of doing things half-assed yeah i think from what you're sharing it seems like the mushroom experience what it does is it gives you a glimpse into the truth of our life and the beauty of life and the connectedness and the oneness of life but at the same time uh, it also reminds you that life is limited right because at least this physical life is limited and you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or day after tomorrow. 
and life can end in a brink of a moment mm -hmm. but because it has not ended yet you still have that opportunity to really live your calling and your purpose and it doesn't matter if you're perfect or not or if you have like from the conversations that I've I've had most of the people creative people very smart and intelligent people always have this sense of imposter syndrome like who am i to do this yeah you know but like marianne williamson said who are you not to do it right yes, it's your exactly. role and your duty to shine yeah. whatever that shining is whether it's for a one person or a hundred people if you mm -hmm. shine you'll feel better but you'll also allow others to feel better as well and know? even if we're just inspiring uh three people or five yeah, exactly. people like in my circle um may you know well i limit it to eight because everybody's getting messages but it's something i do every saturday it's ten dollars but i'm like i i'm stepping into supporting these people we have a lot of chaos going on in the world now a lot of stress a lot of uncertainty and and that's like what i'm doing to support these women with energy healing and messages for that so even if you have eight people or one person or two or if you start a facebook group and there's five people in there serve those five people give what you you know you're you're making an impact and 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 uh because we're all about now how oh, i want a million followers or i have to have you know how many likes and it's not it that that was one thing in the sessions in the journeys i i, I was like looking i was like i saw that so many times the facebook and then stuff i'm like this is just such bs um at, at the time i thought so shallow what am i trying to do here and then you know of course it's a wonderful space to share and to connect and it's it's good but i was thinking don't worry about if somebody liked your page that point of it you know i was like what you really get deeper in okay why am i here why am i why am i posting this post so people can just say oh cool or is there a reason behind it to so today i posted this gif and it had a, a cat with these like sparks coming out of its paws and I and I charged it up with Reiki mm. and then I put I said this this image is charged with Reiki sit and receive and and receive the energy healing so like now I'm kind of putting something behind everything on how I can put out something beneficial some even if it's some little crazy thing like that you know so uh, if, you know obviously you've done multiple sessions right um how many sessions have you done so far? And what 11. makes you keep going back to doing a session time after time? Like, what are you looking for ultimately? Right you now. Know? So so now I've had 11 and um, I will do a couple more for sure. Uh, yeah. Probably probably this year. Um, at this point now that I've got my uh, um, nervous system recalibrated, I've cleaned out a lot of stuff I see. Now it's the the joy, the excitement of channeling, opening more to the other to the guides. So I can help people I give readings, I, I give healings and I'm things are opening up more and it helps uh, my clients better. Um, it's also mm -hmm. so freaking magical that I it's just like blows your mind how bad I'm like, this is just too incredible. So even when it's hard, it's like so incredible. And sometimes, sometimes I've, there's been ones where I said, I think even the last one I said, oh, God, this takes so much out of you. Cause you're even, you know, you're doing the vocals, you're hitting your, you know, self. You're, and I said, I don't think, Oh God, do I ever want to do this again? And then, yeah, I want to do it again. Cause it's just continuing to, to teach, to open, to clear, to uh, enhance. And maybe right. some person would do five and that's it or a couple or maybe yeah. a few. Um, everybody's going to be different. But I am like, I'm kind of even surprised at myself. Like, I'm pretty, bra I feel like I'm real brave, you know, in that yeah. area. Because I wouldn't jump out of a plane. I wouldn't take, I've never taken cocaine or, you know, in the 80s, everybody's, I'm like, the. I was the girl at the party in the 80s where I remember sitting there with in the, all these people sitting around the living room, passing around the plate of cocaine. And I'm the only one that said, said no, I'm not doing that. And then I remember Wait, I was passing a, a plate, <laughs> a plate of cocaine. Like... Yeah, they would pass a plate of dr drugs around at parties in the 80s. Oh. And I was the only one sitting there like no no thank you don't no, you thank know. You. <laughs> and then th then i'll just tell you something funny because i remember in the 19 in the 80s that's when madonna was you know all the mm. and i was in my 20s and i was at this club i was standing at the bar and this guy comes up to me and says oh i you know do you want to come back with me i've got some you know 
he meant cocaine, you know, and I looked at her and I said, I'm going to call the police. No, okay. <laughs> like I was such a straight laced good, you know, I'm up at nine at the gym. And so I thought, you know, I, I'm doing this and, um, and I wouldn't even call it a drug, but it's a, you know, people compare it to that. So yeah. well, sugar um, is a drug. Yeah. Caffeine. Right. God, I try to caffeine get off that. That's, <laughs> that's my cigarettes, Nicotine is a drug. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 But I think, yeah, if done in a safe setting and if you, you know, realize and recognize the sacredness sacredness of the plant medicine. Yeah, and it has, I, uh, so much. Potential. I just, I just want to reiterate for everybody. Don't. Um, I'm not telling anybody you should do it. I'm not. You know, you have to decide for yourself. And I would suggest not doing it alone and knowing what you're doing. Look into it deeply oh, yeah. first. Don't just go out there and say I'm going to do this now because Marla did it. Just <laughs> yeah, and I've not done it myself. I want to do it, and that is why I'm connecting with my friends, including Marla, to yeah. understand from their perspective, and to really find out um, what should my what should my mindset be, and how I should prepare, and what I should think about. Now, Marla, uh, let's talk about the shadow now because we've spoken a little bit about it. You've quoted Carl Jung in your book saying. Unfortunately, there can be no doubt that man or woman is on the whole less good than he imagines himself or wants to be. Everyone carries a shadow and the less it is embodied in the individual's conscious life, the blacker and denser it is. To become conscious of the shadow, it involves recognizing the dark aspects of the personality as present and real. The act is the essential condition for any kind of self-knowledge. So talk to us a bit more about this shadow self right that, the uh, shadow like stuff. like whenever we can't stand somebody or something about somebody that's the, the our shadow coming out and if we don't like it in them it's really showing us that we have that quality in ourselves and hmm. so it's showing us and and but also if we like something in somebody like i i remember listening to your podcast i think i started long time, maybe 2015, whenever you started it, and I mm. didn't know what you looked like. And I would listen to us. Oh, what a cool guy. I love this. And look what he's doing. And then I, I, but see, because I knew I wanted to do a podcast tonight, but I was looking up right. to you. And so you, you can see things in people that you admire, but you might think I could never do it because you have it in you. And then the shadow as well. If you see something, oh, that guy, you know, maybe people who hated, you know, President Trump, they just, oh, the anger and the hatred. What is that? That's their shadow. Something in mm. him, his brashness or his way of, of being that they didn't like, uh, they, they've got that in them too. So that's coming back. So it's interesting to work with the shadow and it's nothing to be um, ashamed of or, you know, anything like that. We all have it, have the shadow aspects and and things that, you know, that we we carry in there and there's always been somebody i mean you could look at somebody and just you just don't like their face you know what i mean yeah. it's like why i don't know it just bugs me i don't like that personality or i don't like something yeah. about somebody you know is it because if you don't like that is it because you want to express that side but you're not allowing yourself it's repressed within is that what it is it could it could be that but also it could be maybe you you don't like let's say you think oh that god god she's such a bitch God, that woman, because mm -hmm. you're, you have that bitch in you. And then you look at yeah. it and say, well, where, where could I, where could I embrace my inner bitch? Where, where would that be a benefit? Well, if, if a man, a uh, repair man comes to my home and my husband's not there and he's trying to make his way in or making some remark or, or trying something and then, okay, get out. You know, you, my inner bitch, when would that be beneficial? So you look, you know, when, so, so you might not like something in someone else, but you have that quality. And then how can you Im integrate and embrace that quality? Because mm. there's, we all have every quality in us. We have, you know, uh, the dark, the light, the love, the hate, we have everything, we embody everything. And so mm. to, we can't say, oh, I'm, I just, I'm so perfect, you know, only love and light. We still have as well, the ego, we're still, working with that. And so when people coach with me, they, we work on the shadow work, we work with underlying commitments. That's what we were talking about when, uh, when maybe when I was bullied, I got I made that underlying commitment to myself in my in my uh, subconscious that I'm not good enough, I can't do Oh, I guess I'm, I'm not good. I they don't like me how I look, they don't like my hair. They don't like me. I'm just, uh, you know, they call me names. And then it was hard for me to step into uh, that leadership role. 
I'd still do things. I'd still try things, but I didn't go in fully. Mm. So if someone listening right now, how do they go about firstly understanding what their triggers are? And now that they have the triggers, what can they do about it? How do I go about integrating uh, that shadow aspect, which I have recognized through yeah. my encounters or experiences? How do I go about integrating that right. into my own life? Yeah, there's there's things there's uh, shadow. You know, Debbie Ford wrote a book, uh, The Shadow Effect and Dark Side of the Light Chasers. I mean, it would be good to get a book like that or go. It's there's some um, exercises you can do writing things down, you know, that you don't like. And where can you find those qualities that are in you? There's things that you can do. So I would I would say look that up and work with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Or if you coach with me, we go through it. But um, what? Well, you were saying how can you find it no you were saying what <laughs> no i mean so so i mean along those same lines let's say a person has done that first step and knows yeah. okay this is my trigger i get triggered oh, when triggers. I, I see this triggers. group of people this person and maybe i realize okay maybe there's some something within me that that yeah. person is mirroring how do i, I, I have a, i have now? a story i put in the magic seeker about a trigger so yeah. for some reason Jehovah Witnesses trigger me when I see mm -hmm. them walking around the neighborhood and they're going to yeah. be knock, knocking on doors. And I one day I was out with the dog walking last year and these two women, these two uh, Latina women were walking in the neighborhood. Uh, and one was, you know, I'm being very, very honest here. I'm just being honest. So one yeah. was uh, quite overweight and then the other one was taller, you know, long hair. Yeah. And I was just walking and they said, oh, hey, uh, have you heard about the Bible? And then I was just like, oh, Jehovah's Witnesses, they're going to. And then I said, no, no, I don't, you know, never mind. And I was thinking, how dare they go around knocking on doors, trying to trying to convert people when I have my own spiritual practice. And these people are from Latin America. And it was years, uh, hundreds of years ago when the Spanish came down and forced the indigenous people to become Catholic. And now they're go knocking on doors, trying to force people to go to their religion. Oh, the irony. This is just not right. And then I thought, well, the, the woman is overweight. Isn't there a commandment or a something in the Bible about gluttony? Or, you know, she, I bet she, she's going to lecture me and she's not even following all the commandments. Well, let me just look it up. If she comes by again, I'll have my answer ready. I'm looking up on my iPhone, Googling mm. the Ten Commandments or whatever it was, you know, gluttony yeah. or, and I'm trying to look, you know, and my internet would not connect my phone. Mm. And I have the iPhone 11. It always connects. It wouldn't do it. I tried again. Well, I'm going to get on there. The internet would not connect. And I heard my guide say, Marla, we don't want you to do that. Don't do that. And then I was like, oh, okay. So then I walked back around and then I went and sat on my porch with my dog. They came, they didn't recognize, they came past my house and stood there and I watched them and they were looking around like so defeated, like where, which house should we go to next? Cause I'm sure they get a lot of doors slammed in their faces. Mm -hmm. And then I was looking at them and I just felt so much compassion and I felt ashamed of myself. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm always triggered by, by this. They're just trying to, they found, I found my spirituality with my crystals and my shamanism and all of this. And, and, and they found theirs in the Christian Bible or in the, their sect of whatever mm -hmm. they're doing. And they're yeah. just trying to be happy in life. And they're just trying to, and I felt so much compassion. I was like, thank you guys for shutting down my internet. Thank you for not yeah. making me be an ass. Right. <laughs> and I, I would feel like a complete shit if I did it, but I was ready to do it because I was triggered. Yeah, I was triggered. Yeah. I was like, how dare I, I? And so I've, that was a trigger that I had to catch and see in myself. That was a shadow. Mm. Why am I so triggered by these people that come around knocking on doors? <laughs> Interesting. That's a great story. And thanks for sharing that. Yeah. I'm sure people who are watching or listening right now are able to resonate. In my case, and many of our listeners know, but my mom is a Christian. And so I inherently realize that there's a benefit of, of a place like a church <clears throat> because you go to church on a Sunday morning, you meet people around you, like-minded people, they're wearing good clothes, putting forward their best selves. Yeah. And just that human connection is, I feel missing in a lot of communities, which I think the church has done a good job of. Obviously right. there are yes. you know, so many limitations, right? I mean, everyone has their own opinion um, and you would vouch that 
you know, spirituality allows you to explore your own version of yeah. your worldview and, and how you think the universe operates. But inherently, the good thing about going to church is that you get to meet this. It's like a mastermind, right? <clears throat> it's yeah. like a spiritual mastermind. You meet yeah. the same people. You're all promising that you'll do these things, be a better human. And you're hopefully hugging and 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 also donation is a core component. So you're, you know, donating your money towards you know, the downtrodden. So, right. Yeah, it's interesting how you are able to shift your perspective, and release that potential trigger. Yeah, I'm, and I mean, yeah. I'm not triggered by uh, church or Christianity. I mean, I love going into churches. I just would be triggered that they would come to my door and try to, to your door and you yeah, know, yeah, that's yeah. what it oh, was. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't that they, they, you know, they could go to church. I love going in churches. Wherever I go all over the world, I have to go in churches and pray. I love it. But uh, yeah, that, that try, coming and even telemark, you know, or whatever, they're selling something coming at your yeah. door. I'm like, you know, because I lived in apartments my whole life, my whole adult life until 2011 when we bought a house. And so nobody right. would become knocking on your door all of a sudden we move to a house and people are like marching up <laughs> knocking on your door and you're like who are you what do you want it's <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah yeah no i totally totally agree uh marla now as we dive further how would you compare the effects of silent meditation to psilocybin uh okay the the benefit like the benefits of meditating and toward uh, compared to the benefits of doing a uh, journey no Not the experiential easy. differences oh well meditation i mean meditation for me has always been a little tricky to and my mind's a little cal it's it's calmer now than it used to be but yeah i personally maybe because i haven't i always say i gotta meditate every day i gotta meditate every but i haven't had any far out experiences meditating uh now breath work i've done here in LA before, which is really, whoo, that does release a lot. That really gets you, but, but, uh, meditation for me, didn't give me any of those things. Like some people would say, oh yeah, you can get the same effects with meditation with psilocybin. Not in my, not in my opinion, from what I've experienced, psilocybin is a psychedelic, uh, a psychoactive, uh, um, substance yeah. and it's going to take you to other dimensions and stuff whereas i don't know maybe just some masters could do that with meditation or real experienced meditators i haven't had that have you said that it's made your meditation easier after these uh, doses well have you tried i'll that tell you that? this so now i have i can feel like energy coming up my legs energy i get now when the guides are around i get a lot of touches on my head my crown chakra is activated so when i sit down uh, to meditate, I'm intend. I have my intention of connecting, and I can feel stuff. The the things, come, you know, um, or, or when I'm going to do a reading or a healing, I can start feeling the tingling, the touches, and I know they're there. So it's more the intention when I'm sitting down to meditate. That intention. But I've been doing the hemisync. I've started. I've started mm -hmm. to work on my mediumship now. Now okay. I am able to do some mediumship. I mean, I'm not like James Von Prague yet, but but I am getting some um, people coming through, which is right. thrilling. I love that. Interesting. Um, are there any risks or side effects that somebody should think about when it comes to uh, magic mushrooms? You know, I probably, I'm not the best person to ask. I haven't noticed any adverse side effects. And I I think what, what I've read is yep. no, because they use it in to help people heal from addictions and all of that. Um, could they have some psychotic break or something? You know, I don't know. I, I don't want to say yes or no. I don't know. And, mm -hmm. and don't mix it. I mean, like if somebody thinks, oh, I'm going to have a drink with this or smoke some pot, I, I mean, I wouldn't play with that or mix things with it or any of that stuff. So I just very pure, very intentional, very mm. sacred. Um, and you know, the sage, the whole thing. I mean, it's just so you clear the room and you're intentional about it and stuff. So for me, right. I'm not afraid. I know my husband gets real worried. Well, you could get, you know, a psychotic break. You could get this, that brain damage. And, and I'm like, I haven't, heard that or read that experienced that know anybody who's had that that i'm not afraid of that worried about it um for me it's something that i really has has uh, really changed my life so if anybody mm -hmm. who gets freaked out even my mom she heard i was going to do it oh my god you know and i'm like <laughs> look, i i 
I feel in my gut what I need. You know, we all have our own guidance system and what we we can do for ourselves. And uh, I trust that more than someone else's fears of they don't even know what it is or, or, you know, have never done it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, anyone who's listening or watching should know that we're not making any recommendations over here. I'm just asking questions based on my own personal curiosity. And because I had conversations with Marla before this, I was really curious and fascinated to learn about her experiences. Yeah. And she's just sharing her story about what she went yep. through. I'm not telling anybody to do it. <laughs> <laughs> just like okay. with vaccines, I don't take them, but I don't tell anybody else not to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm glad that you mentioned uh, the importance of um, setting, right? Like even in the men's group, uh, the circle that I'm attending right now, before our session, we take some time to, you know, clear out the table, clear out any objects that might be in front of us that might be, ta- you know, distracting us or not allowing us to focus, yeah. and then switching on the essential oils or whatever it is, mm-hmm. that allows you to be in the present moment, right? So yeah. all of that, those rituals and those routines, are important before getting into any ceremony like we're talking about right now. It's not about just making a concoction or just eat munching them, right? It's there's right. a step by step process that in large part has been passed down from time immemorial so that people yes, can been partake doing this in for the- thousands of years and yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. It's not like just getting some uh, chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> pot in them or so you know <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> we used to call it pot in the 70s i don't know what they call marijuana now but pot you yeah know, i think we still it call pot. it <laughs> yeah one of my um, best experiences was when i was in uh, undergrad um and uh, it was just a friend a couple of friends of ours and we had gone to the clearing sort of not proper forest but uh, you know clearing on the outskirts of that particular university town that I was living in. And I still remember that uh, smoking allowed me to really open my mind and allowed me to connect with uh, nature around me. And the greens were more intense and the average jokes were more funnier. (laughs) And uh, everyone was hungry. Everybody's hungry, yeah. It reminds you that, you know, sometimes we overcomplicate life. At the end of it, all we need is some good food. We need some good uh, conversations. And we just need some practices that will allow us to feel better. That's it. Right. Everybody's just looking to feel better. We're looking to know that we're, you know, everything's going to be okay really i mean everybody's got scary things going on in their life and or yeah. people who are dying or leaving or breakups or you know job insecurities and and if this this kind of for me it kind of gives you to know that this is these are the third dimensional stuff that people are going through if yeah. you kind of take yourself out and imagine yourself out in the cosmos like you're one of those Pleiades and you're looking down at the earth and you see all these people worries thought forms this that all this chaos and it's yeah. kind of like it's just just going, just going, but it's not who we really are. Mm-hmm. And so it kind of right. um, gives us that space to feel, okay, this is just, don't take everything so seriously. Everything will pass. Everything's just, a, and a conscious, the collective, how, how things happen, wars or maybe a virus or something, the conscious collective of fear of, of, of uh, things, then that it'll come up. So we want to get out of that uh, third dimensional reality and and stand in the light and hold that light for the other people for the other humans yeah i totally agree and sometimes when somebody says we are spiritual beings we're not physical we are beyond physical we are energetic beings um when you're speaking about it it's it's hard to comprehend but i guess when you immerse yourself in something like a magic mushroom ceremony or even do a breathwork ceremony an awakening ceremony that i do with our group on Zoom Sunday mornings, yeah. you're able to tangibly experience what it feels like to see a purple light yeah. in your head. And then you begin to wonder, what is this purple light and this orange light and this yellow light? Wait, you start asking those profound questions about life. Yeah. Not the questions about, you know, how am I gonna pay my bill, which is important, but profound questions like, what is my purpose? Mm-hmm. If money and time were no concern, what would I be doing with my life right now? 
Yeah, we're not, we're not we're not here off. just to work and pay bills. I mean, that is and that has been a lot of people's experience is just work, yeah. work, work at a job you really don't like to pay the bills and then buy things that, you know, on credit cards, you got to pay it off. And you're like mm -hmm. running on a hamster wheel. And it also makes me feel I've never been into a lot of stuff. I mean, I like my books, you know, mm -hmm. I, I like my crisp, but I don't I've never been a person to buy a bunch of uh, stuff. I don't have to have a new car. I drive a, you know, 15 year old car. But but still, when you have those experiences, you want to get even more simple. It's like, I, yeah. I, I want to get rid of some stuff. I don't want the burden of having this stuff. I don't want any bills. I don't, I want to be just, you know, secure and, but free and not burdened mm. down with this so much stuff. So I keep getting like, it's like shedding, shedding, you know. You become a minimalist. A minimalist, a minimalist right? I try to be a minimalist. Yeah. You should see my space here. I've got so much ma magical 35 decks of tarot and oracle cards. And yeah. <laughs> my husband is like, and you, it's in the magic seeker. I get, I get a new deck cut, brought by Amazon. I thought you weren't getting any more decks. You said yeah. the last one was the last one. I was like, but this one's the last one. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I'm also like, I get a lot of Amazon stuff and I think they should do something about the boxes because the boxes lead to a lot of clutter. Right. Maybe some innovation is required of, of Amazon is how do we get rid of these boxes? Because these brown boxes, the more you get them, the, the more they collect in your home, and then you gotta dispose them oh, off. Oh yeah, put it in know? the blue bin, in the recycle bin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so yesterday, Marla, I came across this quote, and I think it was by Robin Sharma, and I he said something along the lines of, "Self care is the path to self love." And so my question to you is, what is your way of self-care what is it you do for yourself that allows you to connect with yourself on a more deeper level yes that's so important that's what my coaching is all about i do boundary coaching and part of it is is uh uh self-care learning that that uh setting you set we set boundaries with ourselves, not with the other person so everything is looking at ourselves and how are we make putting ourselves first in our life knowing that we're not a victim and so um, I've always been into going to the gym and making my green juices and eating well. And, you know, if I need to go to the chiropractor or get a massage, I've always, uh, I've, I've, I never had trouble with any of that because I know that my physical body is my jewel. It's what I need to get around. It's what I need to, mm. I, I'm, I'm a person that has so many interests. I like travel. I like doing things that I need this body to be in top shape. I'll do a lot of energy work, keep my frequency high, uh, energetic stuff, working with my crystals, writing, um, doing my fun, just, just doing the things you love doing a podcast. That's for me. Self-care is doing things, just looking every day and saying, what would make me happy today? Uh, what is the thing that, and then my pet, my dog, Macy, oh my God, just hugging her. That's self-care, anything, taking a bubble bath, just treat a lot of people treat their car better than they treat themselves or they treat their pet better than they treat themselves they'll feed themselves junk they won't exercise they won't do the things that they want to do and uh that needs to be switched around because you are here for a pur purpose you are the spark of the divine so treat yourself like that mm. have you done an oil bath an oil bath no i haven't oh you gotta try an oil bath because uh oiling or Abhyanga oh. is an Ayurvedic self-care ritual or a routine, okay. which is so nourishing. It's amazing. And I used to do it a lot as a kid, but then I forgot about it. But more recently, I'm doing it more often. And you got to, it's very simple. You've got to choose your oil, whether it's, you know, like olive oil, coconut oil, mm -hmm. castor oil, and you literally put it all over your body and you, and you rub it. Oh. And so, you know, firstly, the act of rubbing is the most intimate somatic self-care routine you're you're, right. you're rubbing your own self but also the oil has a way of nourishing your skin mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and healing your microbes that are on the skin and then you have a warm bath or warm shower after that you're going to feel amazing after Ooh, that. I'm gonna try that, that. and then if you have a partner they could do it your back and you know put it in exactly you want your body have the oil, no exactly right? yeah, oh, yeah for sure then there's something called oil pulling which you you swish around oil yeah. in your mouth and that's supposed to detox if you that might be ayurvedic i think too that's also i don't i don't do that uh oil pulling i, I haven't do tried that. that yeah i like the ayurvedic I, i'm a vata pretty much you know okay I'm real fast and fast and furious yeah 
<laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 good to know. But yeah. uh, thanks for sharing everything that you have so far. Action Tribe. I hope you've enjoyed today's interview as much thanks as I did. There's a big revolution that's happening right now. A revolution to understand what consciousness really is. The traditional approach to science has been breaking things down, like I've said before. And that approach is not really working because it seems like we've reached a dead end. We've made so much progress in understanding brain activity and how it contributes to human behavior. But uh, so far, although we've understood brain activity, we've not understood how these brain signals you know, translate into feelings and emotions and experiences. How does the passing of that electrical signal in our neurons result in experiences of pain or experiences of you know disappointment regret rejection how, how does that work and you can't really enter a person's mind right you can't enter a person's mind and record what the consciousness is processing or maybe as vedanta suggests that consciousness is the most fundamental aspect of reality what we can do though is have more experiences of altered states of consciousness whether that is through breath work or whether that is trying out plant medicines and exploring the uncharted realms of the human mind and what you'll find there might just surprise you because the philosopher and writer terence mckenna once put we have been to the moon we have chartered the depths of the ocean and the heart of the atom but we have a fear of looking inward to ourselves because we sense that we're all we sense that we're all the con we okay but we have a fear of looking inward to ourselves because we sense that is where all the contradictions flow together mm. so that i felt was a really amazing quote by Terence McKenna and with that we are at the last round for today the wisdom round. So Marla, what is the best piece of advice that someone has ever given you? Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, it's the best piece of, oh, well, I would say um, I love Bashar who's channeled through Daryl Anka. You know, I like the channelers and he says, um, live your highest excitement every day. And it wasn't given to me personally, but it's given to, you know, everybody when you see them channel and, and, and I just live your highest excitement every day. Look at what makes you excited uh and do that you know just keep doing that do that what makes you happy what makes you excited and i love that um, advice if you could turn back time and spend one hour with someone who's living or dead who would oh, it be well you know my, my dad of course and my brother but, but yeah i miss my grandparents you know the fa the family members that went too soon I would love to do that. But I have spent time with my dad in the astral and that you could read about in the Buddha made me do it. I met him on the astral plane and I got to see him. So that was pretty cool. What is it one thing you do in the morning or in the evening that has improved your life? Mm, well, uh, I do. I did start journaling again and I do that in the morning. I'll take, I live in Los Angeles, so it's like beautiful weather a lot. And I'll go outside in the morning with my coffee and my breakfast and sit under the bougainvillea and hear the birds and I'll, I'll, I'll journal. And, and, uh, it's, it's fun to look back six months late, uh, later, whatever, look back and see where, where I was, what I've been up to and feeling and and especially if you're doing this deep dive spiritually journaling is something that is really beneficial wonderful by the way we still have listeners watching our live stream yeah. which is awesome and a testament to the power of our action tribe we are at one hour and 24 minutes right now <laughs> but you're still watching so message me and i'll give you a free ticket to our next breathwork introduction session just message me i'll send you a free promo code to attend our next workshop now uh, marla what is it one book that you'd like to recommend to our listeners today well besides the magic seeker um there's a book if you there was a book that changed my life and it's not a spiritual book but uh when i was had left my job working for somebody else in 2009. I was working at a matchmaking company and I ended up leaving the job. Didn't know what I was going to do. There's a book called uh, No More Mondays. And now it, it's by Dan Miller, but now they changed it to No More Dreaded Mondays. I used to take that to bed with me like a Bible and it helps people become an entrepreneur, eaglepreneur, solopreneur, taking what you know already. And it really changed my whole life uh, 
as far as being a businesswoman and stepping into what I wanted to, to do on my own without having a boss to pull my strings. Because one of the best things in my life uh, has become has been becoming my own boss, which I did in 2010. So that book really changed my life. So there you go, Action Tribe. Would you like to listen to this book for free? Because Audible.com is offering all of our listeners, all of Action Tribe, one free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial so that you can get to check out their amazing service. And they've got amazing books. They've got a huge library. And in most cases, the book is read out to you by the authors themselves. So it's like a podcast, but it's a book as well. Uh, and you can get No More Mondays. I'm sure the book is available on Audible. But you have to go to my 7 forward slash free book. That's my 7 forward slash free book. If you try the book, we do get a small commission, but that's your way of supporting us for free. There's no extra cost for you, and you can cancel if you want before one month ends. And keep the book. So, Marla, thank you so much for joining us today. Before you go, tell us one thing that you are grateful for and how can we find you online and also purchase your book? Oh, they said, Michael, my, or Mikhail said, such an interesting topic. Thanks for all the info. Oh, you're welcome. I am so grateful for you, AJ. I'm so happy that after I listened to your podcast so many years ago, now we became friends and I'm on your podcast and I'm so grateful for the time we spend together and to have a friend that's so open to all these amazing um, ideas and topics and expansion. And I'm just grateful for, for the ability to do this and be here at this amazing time in history and just everything, staying in the grateful this is my tip you guys before we sign off is staying in gratitude is the key to everything just no matter what we're going through we can find something to stay in the gratitude and how do we find you online oh and Mar <laughs> yes <laughs> Mar marla martinson.com it's m-a-r-l-a-m-a-r-t-e-n-s-o-n marla martinson.com everything's there and then if you want to find me on instagram it's uh, at the mystical matchmaker Wonderful. We'll have all these links up in the show notes. Action Tribe, we spoke about mushrooms today, but if you are not ready to try out mushrooms yet, come have a mystical experience using breathwork. I'm doing our breathwork introduction workshop very soon. I do it every two weeks, but go to my 7 forward slash breathwork intro my 7 forward slash breathwork intro. And it's just 50 cents. You can you know, come join us and we will partake in this wonderful experience. Connect with us on Instagram. Uh, a lot of you send me messages, which I absolutely love. Uh, so if you like this episode, take a screenshot and then tag both me and Marla on Instagram uh, through an Insta story. I'm at, mm -hmm. at my 7 chakras. And Marla, what is your Instagram handle? At the mystical matchmaker. At the mystical matchmaker. The mystical matchmaker. Mm -hmm. Cool. So search for that at my seven chakras as well. Tag us. Uh, and I've got a new website for all of you amazing people. Go to my seven chakras.com. Bottom right, click on that. Leave a voicemail, leave a voice oh, message, yeah. and tell us how you enjoyed this episode. I will feature your voice note uh, on our next episode. So, bottom right, blue microphone icon, click that and leave a voice note. But, Marla, thank you so much for. Coming on our show, this is your second time. The first time I think it was is. four years back. Yeah, the first time was for the Buddha made me do it. So that was 2016 probably or something. So yeah, it's my second exactly. time. And then you've been on my on my uh, YouTube channel. So that's been fun. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And so, but thanks a lot and uh, for being so vulnerable and sharing yeah. your journey of um, mystical, magical, sacred mushrooms and helping us uh, better acquaint with the vast plant medicine world there is and uh, taking us one step closer to a human revolution. Thanks, AJ. Thanks, Action Tribe. Love you Thank guys. you, everybody. Let me figure out how to finish this now. <laughs> okay. Um, where do we click? All right. Thanks, everybody.